Since the very beginning, Samsung's flagship Galaxy phones have used one of two brands of chipset. In the US and China, generally it's been Qualcomm Snapdragon, and for the rest of the world, usually Samsung's own Exynos. There's a long rabbit hole of a discussion to be had about which is actually better, but for now, let's just say it's a contentious topic, but those in the know generally prefer Snapdragon over Exynos. But that may be about to change if one recent report is to be believed, potentially throwing a major plot twist into the story of the Galaxy S23. Take a sec to subscribe to Android Central and we'll get stuck into what's going on with the latest rumors around MediaTek and the next generation of Samsung phones. So what we're talking about is this report from Business Korea, which states that the Samsung Galaxy S22 FE, the upcoming fan edition phone, and the next flagship S23 will use processors from Taiwanese chip giant MediaTek in some countries. Key paragraph right here says, Samsung is considering installing MediaTek's APs in the Galaxy S22 FE and the Galaxy S23, which is to be rolled out in the second half of 2022. It is expected to use MediaTek's APs for about half the Galaxy S22 FE smartphones and for the Galaxy S23 smartphones to be sold in Asia. Now, there's quite a bit to dive into here already. Firstly, obviously we're not expecting a Galaxy S23 anytime in 2022. I think that's probably just a bit of grammatical weirdness, likely stemming from the article being translated from Korean. And secondly, given the phrasing around Asia and half the Galaxy S22 FE models, it seems likely it's Exynos that's potentially being replaced by MediaTek and not Qualcomm. And that makes sense considering Qualcomm has typically had the US market locked down through its dominance in essential patents, not to mention its end-to-end -end 5G modem solution. There is the possibility of a three-way split of course, possibly with the US using Qualcomm, Europe getting Exynos and Asia getting MediaTek, but three different processors would create a lot of engineering overhead, so I seriously doubt that'll happen. Before we go any further, I should say we've done some digging of our own, and through our own sources we can confirm the Galaxy S22 FE part of this report. Basically, we're hearing that a MediaTek-powered S22 FE exists and is in testing. No guarantee that'll be the one that makes it to market, but it is at least in contention. At the same time, our sources weren't able to confirm any of the juicier speculation around the Galaxy S23. Still, Exynos potentially being replaced with MediaTek in key Samsung phones, even if it was only a temporary generational break, would be a huge deal for both MediaTek and Samsung. It'd signal that Samsung has confidence in MediaTek's ability to hit feature parity with Qualcomm's leading chipsets. In this case, for the S22 FE, it would likely be lining up with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, basically to do more or less everything to the same standard as that top-tier SoC, or at least near enough to where the end user, the person actually buying the phone, can't tell the difference. And clearly, a Galaxy S23 win for MediaTek would be an even bigger deal, with the biggest name in Android phones giving a huge vote of confidence to the chipmaker, effectively signaling that, for once, there's actually a real viable alternative to Qualcomm for manufacturers building a high-end Android phone. Of course, we don't yet know anything about the future chip that might run inside a hypothetical MediaTek Galaxy S23. Presumably, it would be the successor to the current Dimensity 9000 platform. But if Samsung was even considering it, it'd have to be at least in the same ballpark as the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 in terms of all the key performance metrics. A big achievement that'd cap off a couple of years of steady improvements from MediaTek at the high end. For software support and updates too, it'd also point to MediaTek being able to hit the very ambitious Android update targets that Samsung recently set for itself with the S22 and S21 series, with four years of platform updates and five years of security patches. That level of support has been far from guaranteed in even relatively recent MediaTek-powered devices, which often haven't enjoyed particularly timely updates to new versions of Android. Case in point, last year's OnePlus Nord 2, which took its sweet time getting Android 12. This kind of move would also be a disastrous vote of no confidence in Exynos, after a torrid couple of years that's seen Exynos variants of Samsung phones struggling to keep up with the Snapdragon models in terms of performance and power consumption, leading in 2020 to Samsung abandoning its own Mongoose core designs and laying off the US-based team who were working on them. Since then, Samsung has switched back to using off-the-shelf ARM Cortex core designs in its SoCs, but the side-by-side -side comparisons have continued to favor Qualcomm. However, although Exynos' performance might not be quite up to the level expected by some of us, I don't think Samsung is anywhere near ready to publicly throw it under the bus like this. Doing so would signal a major strategic change, and it'd go against the direction of travel elsewhere in the industry, where we're seeing Oppo and Google doing more with custom silicon. Major smartphone brands are becoming more, not less, vertically integrated, using more of their own custom components to differentiate their phones. Basically, getting rid of Exynos altogether just doesn't seem realistic. 
If a MediaTek S22 FE or even S23 does end up happening, I'd see it as more of a one-off decision for this generation, with Exynos likely returning in subsequent Galaxy flagships. Speaking to the Korean press recently, Samsung Electronics boss TM Ro has alluded to Samsung continuing to work on its own silicon, making a processor that he says will be unique to Galaxy. Those don't sound like the words of a man who's ready to give up making his own SOCs. Plus, back in 2020, the decision to use Snapdragon, not Exynos, in Korean versions of the Galaxy S20 led to plenty of corporate harumphing, with the Korean press reporting that Samsung LSI, the company's chip-making division, felt humiliated by the decision. And the internal drama around Exynos being dropped in favour of MediaTek, even if it was just for a single generation, would be an order of magnitude greater. So will it actually happen? Well, maybe, for the S22 FE. Like I said, we've confirmed that MediaTek S22 FE variants are indeed being tested right now, and the FE is a product with tighter margins than the mainline Galaxy S phones, so I could see that being within the realm of possibility, especially if it lets Samsung hit a lower price for the FE with, say, a Dimensity 9000. And it could be that Samsung's keeping its options open for the S23 as well. But in my opinion, the far more likely outcome for the S23 is the same Exynos Snapdragon split that we have right now. Nevertheless, expect to see more collaboration between Samsung and MediaTek in the months ahead, and if all goes well, the resulting competition should be good news for anyone who buys a smartphone. Let us know down in the comments what you think of the possibility of a MediaTek-powered Galaxy S22 FE or even Galaxy S23. Do you believe these reports, and would you actually buy one if it ever saw the light of day? In the meantime, be sure to follow Android Central right here for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.